Cowboy Cerrone is a UFC star lauded for his exciting fighting style inside the octagon. Miller's landed a couple of those inside leg kicks. Oh! Huge shot by Cerrone! Donald Cerrone does it again! Outside of it, he's known for his death-defying stunts doing extreme sports like wakeboarding, motocross, rock climbing, rodeo, and many others. People call him the daredevil, a hardcore adrenaline junkie. His friends and acquaintances would often say of him, Cerrone lives for the thrill. Unfortunately, thrill was not the only thing he experienced when he went cave diving, another one of his extreme hobbies. That day in August 2018, he experienced one of his worst nightmares. Cerrone is an experienced scuba diver. He got his certificate when he was in high school, and ever since, he's been to many caves and shipwrecks enjoying the excitement of exploring the world both new and forgotten under the sea. When he went cave diving in Cozumel, he was expecting it to be like all his previous dives. Entering, exploring the caves, taking photos and videos, enjoy the high of being deep underwater on limited air supply, surrounded by darkness pressed on all sides by exquisite rock or crystal formations seen only by the brave and experienced. Exit, a smooth in and out, but it didn't go the way he thought it would. Something went horribly wrong. The island of Cozumel in Mexico is famous to many divers because of its many cenotes, 18 in total, but only a few were easily accessible, one of which is El Arolito, which is situated in the old South Harbor known as Caleta. El Arolito is surrounded by dense forest, a beautiful paradise teeming with butterflies, abundant flora, and crocodiles. The quiet predators linger about, not aggressive, but their presence is definitely something to be wary of, at least for the casual tourists. But for cave-certified scuba divers, these reptiles aren't much of a deterrent. Divers don't come for the above-ground wildlife when they go to El Arolito. Instead, they go for the stellar landscape and the unique biodiversity found underneath the natural preserve, which were created by the mixture of salt and fresh water flowing through the extensive cave system. For the first few days of staying there, Cerrone and his friends enjoyed their time hanging around shipwrecks and coral reefs, but there wasn't enough thrill. Cozumel has many caving systems, and it was only a matter of time before Cerrone decided that he wanted to go for a more serious dive. An older friend, whom Cerrone considers as one of his mentors, accompanied him. The man taught him a lot about cave diving, but he was getting on in age. In fact, before the dive, Cerrone's wife had been worried about the older man's declining motor skills, which would put the two in danger, but Cerrone did his best to assuage her fears. He normally only had two cylinders when diving, but to reassure his wife, this time he brought three so that he can have an extra just in case something happens. Cerrone also emphasized that there would be lines during their cave dive. Lines are very important, especially for technical divers who go into caves for purely recreation. Guidelines, which are typically just nylons, are the lifelines of cave divers. These nylons were normally installed by professional divers who explore the caves for mapping. They run the lines from the mouth of the cave into every segment with directional arrows to ensure that divers would always find their way out, especially in cases where visibility drops to zero. Because of these guidelines that have already been installed inside El Arolito, Cerrone was more confident that their dive would end without a hitch. He was wrong. Despite its spectacular beauty, El Arolito is actually a dangerous cave. Not mentioning the crocodiles that roam the cenote above, the cave itself was made of delicate stone walls that are prone to collapse. The cave stretches nearly 12 miles inland, making it easy to get trapped. Cerrone's friend made a fatal mistake at some point during the dive. He ventured off on his own, and before Cerrone knew what exactly happened, the man was already in trouble. His friend began to panic, which is about the worst thing he could do while inside the underwater cave. Upon discovering his friend's situation, Cerrone was forced to make a decision. In the recounting of the event, Cerrone said there was an unwritten rule in cave diving, 
which is when something goes wrong, you only have to worry about getting yourself out. It's every man for himself. This rule was echoing inside his mind while he watched his friend struggling to detangle himself from the line they'd set up, which is when something goes wrong, you only have to worry about getting yourself out. It's every man for himself, kicking and spinning out of control. Should he go and save his friend or save himself? It was a tough decision to make, especially as his life was also on the line. But in the end, Cerrone decided to help his friend. By that time, all of the kicking and thrashing had already caused a buildup of silt in the water, making the visibility drop to a mere foot. Surprisingly enough, a silt out is one of the biggest dangers in cave diving. The flippers that divers wear can easily send up a small storm of the fine particulate lining caves, making it impossible to see anything until it all settles back down. Every experienced diver knows to always be careful not to kick their feet too hard, and they always make sure to keep track of which direction they are going. But in a total silt-out, it's not always easy to orient oneself, especially in circumstances where one also had to account for a friend's safety, which is the exact situation Cerrone found himself in. The particles in the water were so dense that Cerrone had a hard time finding his friend who had just turned his light off. He didn't know if the man had enough air, or if he had his regulator. At some point, Cerrone even completely lost track of him. He couldn't tell what condition his friend was in. Cerrone himself was starting to have a hard time. The silt made it impossible to orient himself. He couldn't tell up from down. He couldn't even see his hand in front of his face. He tried moving in one direction, only to bump his head on the ceiling. He had to close his eyes and force himself to calm down, despite feeling a panic that he's never felt before. Eventually, Cerrone was able to see the lights from his two watches, but it was useless. He still didn't know where he was in the cave and what direction to go to find the exit. But he had limited air that he was consuming with every panting and panic breath he took, so he couldn't wait for the silt to settle down before moving. The best he could do was to search blindly for the way out while clinging on to any sensation he could use to determine his progress. As he swam, he could feel the current going against his body. Somehow, through his panic, this made him realize that he was going the wrong way. He turned around and swam back, and miraculously, he found the main line. Throughout this ordeal, Cerrone kept his wife and child in mind. He was determined to go home to his family, but he also couldn't help but think about his impending death. His biggest fear was drowning, and in the rare moments of clarity where he managed to calm down, all he could think about was how his biggest fear would be realized if he didn't find the way out. Bizarrely, the waterproof notepad that he and every diver have came to mind. He started thinking about writing a death letter to his family while also berating himself for thinking about writing a letter when he should be focusing his energy on finding the way out. It was a roller coaster of emotions for Cerrone that day. But amidst the panic, he remembered that there was a huge crack that ran along the top of the cave. After searching, he found the crack and followed it. He had first intended to exit through the hole, but it only led him to his initial route. Not giving up, he followed the crack further along until at last, he found the exit. Luckily, his friend also made it out. They met each other outside the cave where they shared the somber realization that this would be the last time they dove together. Cerrone texted his wife and told her there was a scary freaking moment, but daddy's coming home. Cerrone shared his harrowing cave diving experience in an Instagram post and later on a podcast with Joe Rogan, which garnered mixed comments. While fans are worried and supportive of the UFC star, many are skeptical claiming that the cave diving accident was nothing but a publicity stunt. This is mainly due to his too exaggerated recount of what happened and the seemingly unprofessional conduct that can be glimpsed throughout the whole story. The every man for himself especially garnered much heat from many self-proclaimed professional cave divers. But despite the numerous opinions, Cerrone maintained that this particular experience messed with his head. 
Unlike other times in his life where he's nearly died, this was a torturous, drawn-out experience where he was constantly aware of how his time was ticking away. He said he still has nightmares about being lost in a dark cloud of silt. When asked if he was still going to go cave diving in the future... And, um, I'm gonna do it again. Like, I'm not scared of it. Like, that it just needs to be done better. After all, he's a cowboy. It's a way of life. It's a no-quit attitude for him. If you have followed this story to this point, I would like to say a big thank you. If you like this kind of story, don't forget to hit the like button and leave a comment below. For more of this type of content, please click on the subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so you will be notified when another video is posted. Until next time, be cautious and don't ever lose your sense of wonder.